So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat, Sadiq, and it is the Demetra K podcast where we promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are a great people, but we can always strive to do better, right? And so this is not live. I want to say that right off the top. This is a not a live show. But sometimes we do pop into the comment section and we converse with you as we're watching as well. And so today we're going to be talking about three topics. One is something that just came out today with that of Vivica Fox, who sits on uh, Fox Souls, Queen of Cocktails or whatever it is. She said something that was pretty, you know, uh, shocking, I guess you could say, about that of Joe Budden. And then also, um, we are going to be talking about a TikTok that was kind of uh, trending last week in regards to um, a gentleman taking a woman out on a date. And she wanted, uh, she had a request of him that some people was like, what? Then lastly, we are going to talk about that of Sydney Starr. And you guys, some of you may know who uh, she is. I'm going to say that that's what she is. But we'll get into uh, something she said that was pretty shocking as well. And of course, we're going to play our game tonight's conversation. So before we get started, Donovan, what say you? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, wherever you're at in the world. Welcome to the Demetra K podcast. Hey, do us a favor, hit that like, share and subscribe button. And if you want, even become a member because Demetra throughout the week, she drops uh, videos, knowledgeable videos uh, through the African Diaspora News Channel um, and check her out. And do not forget to check out Demetra on Sundays at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, my time and whatever the next zones are. And you can catch her. And not only does she uh, do a great topic there, you also are part of the show is you're, you're a co-host and we interact with the uh, folks. Don't know what, what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be a, a new thing for me. So uh, you're going to get my honest reaction. But again, um, if, if you guys so feel, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, whatever. We, we, we don't mind the kind that rolls, but we prefer the kind that folds. So let's get into it. Thank you so much for that, Donovan. All right, so let's get started for the second time. we got a, quite a few things we're going to talk about. So first on the list, let's go ahead and talk about that of Vivica Fox. Of course, you guys know the Megan, and I need to rephrase that. It's not actually Megan Thee Stallion trial. It's the Tory Lanez trial where he is on trial facing 22 years if found guilty for shooting her in the foot um, along with uh, carrying an unlicensed weapon and um, some other things that he's um, on the trial for at this moment. And so, of course, there's been some things that came out of the, the, the trial uh, specifically that Megan lied about a few things and a lot of people are saying, well, that shouldn't have anything to do with um, her being shot type of thing. Right. So Joe Budden, who you guys know who he is. Um, he only had the one song that I can think of. Pump, 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 pump it up. Um, and he also has a podcast. that sounds like it's wildly popular. Um, he said last week that Megan is not a good person that she has done some terrible things to people he know. Then he also went on to the DJ Academics podcast, I guess it was, and said, I, I don't like that girl. And then talked about how she lied and stuff. And so I guess the queens of Fox Soul Cocktails with Queens, they weighed in on it, uh, specifically that of Vivica Fox. She has something very shocking to say. So here it is. Bitch ass down, hating on that girl. Okay, y'all mad because girls right now was ruling rap. It's just driving y'all crazy that the sisters is just ruling and taking numbers and can tell y'all about yourself, look sexy with it. It's a new day, you know, but if you wanted some attention, to be honest with you, I think that's the wrong one to try and get it from because it's really coming out. Facts are finally coming out after so many years of uh, this trial being long awaited that she was shot so you know get used to it brother it's a new day girls are ruling sorry joe button <laughs> that's going viral <laughs> and sorry that was kind of belabored but y'all y'all heard uh <laughs> y'all heard what she said she did call joe button you know uh, you know tell him to shut his ba up uh in regards to the things that he 
has been saying about Megan Thee Stallion. And she also went on to say that girls are basically ruling things. Women are ruling things. And uh, women are ruling rap now. Deal with it type of thing, right? Now, I should also say that Claudia Jordan went on to uh, co-sign and he doubled down on what she said by actually calling Joe Button's pass uh, to the carpet. And that I guess he's had some uh, accusations of domestic violence and, you know, things like that. So she basically said he is the wrong one to say anything about uh, Megan Stallion at Megan D. Stallion at all. And so, Donovan, well, what is your uh, opinion on what you just heard? Uh, once again, delusional, old ass, broke ass black women. Once again. Once again, um, Vivica Fox, by the way, you guys used to know she used to be a soul trained dancer back in the day. What are women ruling? What are they ruling? Thoughtism? I'll give you that. What are they ruling? You know, looking like transvestites, they're ruling that. So what are they ruling? Uh, single motherhood is destroying the black community. So what are they ruling? They're in politics, Maxine Waters and leading the uh, country and being elected to all these offices, but yet Black men and women are being shot down in the streets. So what are they ruling? Delusional, delusional, delusional. And you got a bitter chick like Vivica Fox because she can't hold a man and can't get a man because now she's way past her prime. Yeah, and I said it. I said it. And I, you know, I, I, I can, she can have her opinion. But, but be real about it. What are women ruling? especially black women. What are they ruling? Nobody, nobody's uh, studying you guys. Nobody's studying you. I mean, you know, people are going with the passport bros. I'm not a passport bro, but the people are doing this and they're doing that. I mean, they keep coming out with these same old tropes that is not real. It is not real whatsoever. And younger women are listening to that. Oh yeah, girl, you could do it on your own or whatever. Oh yeah. What are y'all ruling? The, women are uh, right now, the biggest and uh, number one on the list of uh, evictions and foreclosures in the United States right now. So what are y'all ruling? What are y'all ruling? It, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And don't let me start on, on Claudia Jordan, who can't hold the man either. These are old uh, 304s that are just mad that now they're past their prime and they always got something to say. They always got something to say. Do I agree with Joe Budden and, and what he's doing? I don't know. I'm not in the entertainment industry like that. So he would have a better perspective on that than I would. You know, let's call it for what it is. Yes, Vivica. Whoa, she really gets it. This case is about Megan getting shot. Really? Are you just now realizing that? Just delusional, Demetra. You know, when it comes to Vivica Fox, she's done. She's done. She plays the same character in every movie. She's done. Well, damn. Okay. <clears throat> so, of course, uh, she did say that women aren't ruling, you know, and, and I guess men, you need to deal with it, uh, especially women aren't ruling rap. Now, I, and I'm going to address some stuff that you said, Donovan, but um, I, um, I don't know how much I agree with women are ruling rap because, you know, our generation is actually the generation of hip hop and rap, you know, when it came about and stuff. So I always, I tend to uh, differ with whether these women are even rapping. And even a lot of the men nowadays, I mean, how hard can it really be to rap about a lot of the things we hear these women rapping about, whether it's everything under their clothes, right? I don't think that's talent. I think it's disgusting. I, I, it's nowhere near your Queen Latifah's, Bahamadia's, and, you know, uh, MC Lights. And it, 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 they're nowhere, they don't, they don't, they don't even come near that type of uh talent so yo yo the uh, intelligent black women's coalition you know doing things that are positive so as far as them ruling rap i guess if that's what rap is nowadays then i i guess right i, I don't think i mean anybody could talk like that it doesn't you just need a hot beat and be disgusting um but as far as you know women ruling um uh, things i don't know i just kind of I hear that a lot. I mean, even Beyonce had a song called, you know, uh, girl, women rule the world. And, you know, James Brown had one years ago that says uh, this is a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman's touch, you know, whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about what Vivica is saying there. I think she's a little bit in her feelings in regards to what Joe Budden said. Now, it's not like Joe Budden is very problematic. 
he's a troll for lack of better words and he says incendiary things nevertheless i think he is entitled to his opinion about you know how he feels but you know tell him to shut his bitch ass up i just think it's like wow you know what i mean yeah that, that's you, you're calling yourself queens and i don't know i just think that's not very queenly if you will now obviously they are megan fans i guess you could say that's one thing now i want to get back to what you were saying donovan you said uh single mothers single black mothers are destroying the black family now i don't know how the black mother gets charged with doing that by herself is the black mother complicit in um helping to destroy the black family wait wait wait. did i say family or community you said black i wrote took notes brother okay I, i'm just making sure well if i did that i meant community it's kind of the same thing yeah go ahead yeah it's, it's kind of black family and i'm sorry if it's a little bit stagnant y'all don't know what's going on here so, uh, christmas break a lot of people probably home but so black family black community they're all one and the same if you ask me but you said that they're destroying single mothers are destroying the black family I don't know how she gets charged with that by herself, because as I always say, um, you cannot have a single mama without an absentee father. And they they go and you did they just she would not be that without the daddy being missing, where there is a father. Now we know that the, it's statistically speaking, the father does not have to be in the home with the mom to be considered. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about something else. But so when we say single mother, we're talking about a mom who is raising that child by herself, right? So if she is raising that child by herself, I want to know why is she raising that child by herself? And if she is raising that child by herself, how is she given the charge of destroying the black family? Um, you know, because she's a single mom. Then you say nobody... But I, I want, I'll, I'll, I'll keep those points. I want you to answer that. And I'll go to my next points. How was she, how was she, how did she get okay, um, well, the, the, the bill for that? Well, well, what, what I mean by that is, you know, helping destroy the black community, family, whatever. That's why I brought in like Maxine Waters, our black leadership and stuff like that. You're, you're charged with raising these children, right? Which is fine. The father's not there. The father's not there. A lot of black women are choosing single motherhood willingly and then making the same mistakes over and over and over again, because a lot of our generation and older have been telling them, put your career first, put this first, and then you wanna go have a family, you know, all, all the same tropes. Now, this is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Um, but in, in the aspect of raising these children, you know, we, when you literally take and, and, and wanna be a single mother, at 19 years old, 22 years old, nine times out of 10, you're condemning yourself and the child into a condition of poverty because you're not making $60,000 year to year. You're not, you know, you're just starting your life as a young person. I'm not saying destroy kids or whatever, whatever. I'm not saying delete title to a mistake. But then you see a lot of uh, these young women, instead of being corrected from that mistake, they make the same mistake over and over again. So, uh, uh, you know, and unfortunately, the, the woman is the first teacher. Now, we have a, a lot of young girls today that are willingly going into sex work versus getting a job. Like I said, they want to do OnlyFans. They want to be dancers. When we were coming up, being a dancer wasn't something that you aspire to. It's something that you would have to do to, you know, whatever. But now it's more socially accepted in our community and all that other stuff. Um, so my opinion is being the first teacher, again, it, it affects the children that, that they are raising. Got you. So you said that there, these uh, mothers are choosing to be single mothers. Now, I don't know, in all my 51 years on this earth, I've not, not met one black woman that chose to be a single mother. Now, I also like to make the difference between a single woman and a single mother. A single mother has no help from the father at all. He is missing completely out of the picture, whether it's financially or physically. This is my definition. That's a single mom. That's a single mama. Now you can be a single woman with a child and not be with the father. 
but the father is present in the life of the child. You are not a single mama. You are a single woman that's raising a child. There's a co-parenting rather. You're a single woman, you're co-parenting. But as far as women choosing to be single mamas, I don't know anybody, um, no, no women to ch uh, that chose that. Now, I wasn't a single mother per se. I was a single woman co-parenting with my daughter's father. I did not um, go into a relationship with him and have a baby thinking, you know, it'd be nice to be a, you know, uh, to raise her without him in the home. I, I didn't think that. I, I never once thought that. And so I think we need to be careful of saying, now there's some women who do, right? They get a turkey baster and they're like, okay, I'm gonna be a single mom or whatever. There's some women who do that. But I'm saying as far as women just setting out to say, I want to be, do y'all know how hard it is to raise a child without the help of the other parent, whether you are a man or you're a woman, if you are the primary caretaker of that child and the other parent comes in every other weekend or whatever it does, that's hard to do that. And I did that. I was a primary caretaker of my daughter. It was hard sometimes to work. Um, you know, and, and have somebody watch it, which I he did. My family, they were good in that. And, you know, just do a lot of stuff without him immediately being in the house. That was hard, more mentally than anything. So I don't know of anybody, woman who was choosing that. Now, I know because I hear this from men a lot. Well, she wouldn't let me be in the life of the child. That's bullshit. She might not have wanted you to be in the life of the child, but it ain't up to her. It's up to you. To whether you want to be in the life of the child just like she take you and put the white man on you then you take her and put the white man on her and say listen i'm trying to see my child she won't let me see my child she's doing a b c and d so i need you to put some paperwork on her so that i can see my child or whatever but i don't i don't listen unless that woman ran off the mars and took your child okay that's a different story but if she's acting and i'm not saying women don't do that because i listen i personally have a, I, I have a, a loved one of mine that's personally going through that with a bitter baby mama, okay? So I know that women like that exist, but we don't allow my loved one to be make that an excuse. Well, she won't let me. Nah, we, we got you, boo. We're going to make sure that you're able to be in the life of your, your child and all of that. So I'm saying there's no excuse to blame the mama for not allowing you, allowing you to be in the life of your child. Absolutely. But would you agree the statistics in the black community of single uh, motherhood or single, uh, what do you call it? Single family, single led families is 70 something percent in the black community. Yes. Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. So if, and most of that 70%, most of, it, I don't know the numbers of how many single fathers are leading things, but we know it's a majority of women. Okay. Would you agree that a good majority portion of the women that are leading families the father is alive outside orbiting outside of the family home structure and she never got married. Now, a, a good example, my, 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 my mother's a, a widowed mother. That's different. Circumstances beyond her control. So would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, I agree with that. So would it not make sense then that women are choosing to be single mothers? That's a fact, correct? No, it's not. Because I because you're going to have to clarify that for me. How are they choosing that? Well, what I'm saying is you're laying down with a man that you would think if you're going to let a man lay down with you, he's potential enough to be your husband, correct? So, uh, yeah, I, I, okay, I, get, I follow that. Go ahead. So, so whatever, for whatever, whatever reasons, you're letting him get the cookies without putting a mandate on him or in some cases, you know, and we know things happen. Like I said, I'm not shaming women. I know things happen. Everybody's entitled to a mistake. But there's a lot of women out there that have multiple baby fathers. Now, what I just said, using the statistic, out of the 70%, how, how, I would say the majority of that 70%, so let's just say 40, I'm going to give it to the bare minimum, are women that have fathers that are out there that are leading households. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they're choosing that because why aren't they getting, why aren't they marrying the men that they're having relationships with? And, 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 I, and I know it's a two-way street. The man's got to be able to do his thing and whatever the deal is. But why are these women that are single mothers that are doing that, knowing at 19 years old, uh, I'm not making 60,000, like, you know, good, good example, you know, you're not making $60,000 a year. So when you have a child out of wedlock or 
you're not ready for a child, are you not condemning that child into poverty and yourself? I mean, I guess, but then where does the daddy come in? What, why, how does she choose to be a baby mama, a single baby mama, and, and the father didn't get to choose that? Because well, then they lay down together? Yeah, they lay down together, but who chooses to have a baby or not? Her, her body, her choice. Yeah, but if you, you've also chose that when you got up in her with no protection. True. Her body, her choice, though. She has the choice of bringing in the not, child not, or bringing yeah, not in the her child. Her body, her choice, but she can't right. get that baby if the man don't it decides not to put some on his stuff to where he right. doesn't create a life that right. he don't want to be around for. Right. Again, so why are, again, in our community, the majority, 70 percent of black households are led by a single person? Yeah, that that is true. So I'm not I'm not disputing that number, but again, we're not gonna put that black woman on the hook and not put that black man on the hook. There, there's there's no way. No, no, and, and I want to say this too, uh, statistically speaking, black more uh, black men and black women are married to each other more than they are married to anybody else. So let's just say that, okay? Now, how is it that we are charging the woman only? with being in the 77 percent of single parent household and not that man because when i hear men do that oh well you know the, the household is head by a black woman that's 77 percent. and what i hear is he has nothing to do with that that's what i hear yeah, that he see, has see, nothing see, to do with that see and again you're only hearing a part of it because i because did i not say did i not say did i not say men have something to do with it in, in regards to, to their part, what I Let said was, you, wait, 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 what, what wait. do they have to do with it? They, they help bring, bring the child in, 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 into existence. We know that we're not worried about if, what their contributions are. What I'm saying is our older women are telling younger women, giving them the wrong information. Girl, you don't need no man. It's OK if you have a baby without a man. You don't need a man to do this. We're giving them the wrong information. That, that, and I would tell you all that's probably a small amount. Maybe your aunties and your mamas and your sisters are telling they younger women that, but I ain't never heard no woman, including my mama, my grandmama, or no other woman influential in my life ever told me it's all right to have a baby without a man involved or being, never. And I, I, I've never heard any woman say that personally. I'm not saying on the internet, somebody, I don't know. I've never personally heard a woman give that advice to their child, their daughter, child, or aunt, or, or, or niece, or any of that. And so what I'm, what I'm saying is a lot of times we get wrapped up into these fantasies and the little bleeps and stuff we hear online. Now, maybe you have heard that in your family or you women, you know personally, but I've never heard any woman tell that their child to it's okay because any woman that has raised a child primarily by herself would know that ain't easy it's easy to have somebody in the house with them so i've never heard that right so so even though and, and, and you know what you wouldn't hear that because that, that that's something you would say in private to your child or when you're doing your child time so how did you hear it no no i didn't hear it i haven't then heard how it. you know what's being said because the statistics show there's 70 percent of women that are single but how do you know that's, that the women are telling those women that? Well, no, I don't know that they're, that they're telling that. But how are these women making the same mistakes over and over again? Brother? But yet, wait, wait, wait. But yet other groups, you switch it. Other groups are more married than our group. But then how do we know? But you said you don't know, but you made the assertion that other women are telling younger work women that's OK not to get married. And I'm well, asking well, you, well, did you hear well, that? Well, 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 technically, that is that is what, what is being said, that the feminism agenda, which is Vivica Fox is a part of. Girl, you don't need no man. Women are ruling. It's wrong. It's it's delusional family getting married. There's benefits to it. You, the, 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 the feminism sphere unlike just like the manosphere is putting out a false narrative and you know it and they know it you got a lot of young women out here that are out here and they'll tell them, girl go to college right the girl goes to college whatever and she gets a degree then she gets into her career now she's just what Ke kevin samuels you know what was saying i mean the numbers add up and then by the time they're 30 35 they're looking to get married or whatever whatever and now they're they're, they're in geriatric geriatric pregnancy or close to it this is what they've been told and indoctrinated to. We got to stop telling our kids to go to college, especially when you know your, your child is not college material. A lot of black women, they lead the uh, group 
in regards to student uh, debt. They got all these degrees, but no man. So it's it's being it's being told somewhere. But so you, in all fairness, because I don't want to be disingenuous, you never heard a, a woman tell another younger woman, black my sure, daughter, sure, niece, sure. yeah, I, I've heard it. I, I've heard it. So now you've heard, okay. No, no, um, I, no, no. I've heard it with some of my friends that are kind of like hyena type. You know, they, they, you know just stupid, just the stupidness in it. Generational uh, poverty. You got three women. You know families that are generation, you know, you know, you have that friend, the mom is kind of on her own and you got the friend and then she gets in the same situation. Now she has a daughter. Now the daughter's in the same situation. Yeah. I've heard it. I've heard it. Oh, she's okay. So you're, I'm telling you, I've never heard it, but, um, I, you know, I, I have a daughter who will be 30 next week. Okay. Yes. I know. I know. I don't look that old. I'm just kidding. So I have a daughter to be 30 next week. She does not have any children. She is, you know, not involved in a relationship. Now I have personally told my daughter, um, that she needs to be involved with a husband before she has a child. Okay. So as far as I can see, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Does my daughter want to be a mother? Yeah, she wants to be a mother, but she's not going to be no mama without no daddy involved. You know, and that's something I taught her because, you know, her, her father and I did not stay together. I was 21 when I had her, you know, uh, it was difficult. It wasn't impossible, but it would have been easier if we would have stayed together. Now, I say all that to say, because I hear these nonsensical arguments, oh, well, I'm going to hit the wall and all this other stuff. Man, there's people, trust me, there's, there's women out there having babies in, in their late 50s having babies. It wouldn't be me, but there's women out there doing it. So the point that I'm making is I think we need to be very clear in the message that we're sending our daughters and our black women that, oh, because you're getting ready to hit the wall, you need to go on and settle down. No, I want my child to settle down with a good choice, as they say up in the nation. Find, uh, settle down to a good choice, not just anybody that's saying and doing any old thing. I need to, as they say in the nation, let's take this relationship to court. Let me, you see how the stuff you saying, the stuff you're doing and, you, and vice versa. I want to meet your family. You meet my family. We're going to weigh it all. As my dad say, let's get all the evidence and let's weigh it to make sure that we are suitable for each other. And so unfortunately, we don't always do that. I didn't always do that. But I've taught my daughter and I'm not teaching her ain't no man good enough for you. Nah, my daughter's been on dates, but you know, some of these men out there, they just own the silliness, you know? And so it's like, and I'll be honest with you, my daughter, she, she, she know how to read them a lot uh, better and faster than her mama, you know? Cause she's like, I only need one date, maybe two, right? I give you a chance, but if you be on some nonsense, like she said, she went out with this one dude she met, you know, on one of these apps. And they went out to the park and stuff. And she said he was just sitting there kind of just moping. He wouldn't talk. He was in a bad mood. And so she said she's trying to talk to him and stuff. And he was just, you know, just not feeling it. So she said she came back home and that was it. Like, I don't, I don't need to keep talking to you for what? Like, you obviously got some other issues. And so is, is my daughter supposed to that bed down with somebody like that because she about to hit the wall? Nah. I would like for her to, you know, to be with somebody who they're on the same page. My daughter's a college educated woman. She got a degree and all of that. So she ain't, you know, just some woman out there hanging out doing nothing. But the point that I'm making is I want my daughter to settle down with a good choice because I only want her to do it once. I don't want her to be, you know, in and out of all these relationships and, you know, kids with this dude and all. Now I want her to do it one time. And if that one time comes when she's 40, 45, 50, I hope it don't. But if it does, then so be it. But if she's not going to be just in a relationship with any old body just because somebody on the internet talking about you about to hit some wall. Yeah, no, exactly. But you don't want to be a Vivica Fox either, old and bitter and mad because you, you didn't. No, no, no. No, what, I, what I'm saying is I'm not I, I'm not saying to you, for some people they, they might not make it. But what I'm saying is she, she doesn't want to be a Vivica Fox old and bitter. That, 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 that Vivica Fox got a whole I don't know what her malfunction is. But I don't think it makes you old and bitter because you're not going to settle down with just any old body just so you don't get labeled a certain way. No, no, no. That, you see, you're taking the words out of my mouth. Vivica Fox, for some reason, has an agenda against men. And you can see that she's mad and bitter at men. Be it maybe she didn't get the guy she wanted. I don't know. You know, that's speculating. But what I'm saying is you're, uh, women like Vivica Fox that are bitter they give the wrong information to our younger women that think that she's some kind of role model to be. I don't want to grow up. Okay, I'll, I'll give an example. 
if I had a, a, a grandfather or somebody that I a mentor that I look up to and they're mad and bitter, I don't want to be like that person because you know, that's stressful and all this other stuff like that. That's not the person I'm going to follow because somewhere along the line, they're pissed off. And I don't know why. So I will say this. I've never, and Vivica's not that much older than me, you know, a couple years, I guess. But I've never looked up to her as a role model. And I don't I don't even know why anybody would. Yeah, Vivica does come off as um, bitter. She does to me a little bit mean-spirited. I don't know what happened to Vivica, but... I say this, and I and I've said this for years. Ain't nobody, and I put the, everything I got on this, more influential over the life of my daughter than me. And if somebody is more influential over your child than you, then that ain't Vivica's problem or whoever. That's your problem that somebody else could come in and influence your child to do something completely different than they have been taught, right? Even at the age of 30 years old, my daughter still listens to me to some degree, you know, she has her own opinions about stuff, but for the most part, I, I, I'm still um, influential over her life. And, you know, I'm the, I am the source of wisdom, the circle of influence. And so that comes from the, uh, bringing your children up, right? As y'all that's follow the Bible says, uh, raise a child in a way that it should go that way when it's old, it will not depart from it. Well, it's just common sense. Raise your children with some standards, some sense and all these things, you know, in between. That way, when they're older, they'll have a compass to say, okay, this is what I was taught. How far off am I from the values that were uh, taught to me? So going back to Vivica, influencing other women and girls, yes, she's probably doing that, but that ain't Vivica's fault. That's their mamas and their aunties and whoever's uh, women's uh, fault that somebody who I believe to be cantankerous as Vivica Fox can do that to them. Right. And, and in this generation, these younger generations that, that come after us, you know that they're highly influenced by these influencers and stuff like that. These are, uh, I would call them the, the follower generations. You know, like I said, uh, Dr. J was a great hero of mine, but I didn't want to be Dr. J. I wanted to be like Dr. J, but I didn't want to be Dr. J. You got people that are buying $300 Jordans and yet they can't play a lick of basketball. You know, that, that's the generation that we're dealing with. And so when you see a Vivica Fox, she has a lot of influence on a lot of these younger girls. And so a lot of, and, and men. And so we're going to be following, you know, what she says. Oh yeah, I'm going to be like Vivica. Oh yeah, men ain't shit. Uh, women ain't shit. You know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that's the the, the, the situation that 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 we're uh, dealing with. She's, she comes off very bitter. When people show you who they are, you better believe them. She is a bitter woman. And I don't know why. Yeah, but most of us will probably never meet Vivica Fox. You know no, what I mean? No, exactly. So no, no, exactly. But what I'm saying is, and, and I agree with you, we have to start telling our children reality versus comedy relief or whatever it is that these influencers are doing. You should have more influence, but unfortunately, we've got a lot of younger parents that are partying with their kids. They're not raising their kids. Let, let's be real about that. They're not raising their kids. Grandmama raised the kids, and then, and then the kids... Uh, ran over grandmama and all them because grandmama and them are too old to really do what they did earlier. So, you know, we got a bunch of kids that basically raised themselves and they're just out there and they're making the same mistakes over and over again and nobody's correcting it. Yeah. And I'm just going to stand 10 toes down on it. You know, the, the mama shouldn't be raising a child by herself. The daddy should be there as well. And if you're a single father or, you know, you got primary custody of the kids as a, as a man, the one, the mama should be there too. They should not be raising the children by yourself. So I'm always pushed back on that because I, I, I get it. You know, sister, some of the sisters got some issues, but we're not going to charge the black woman for being the one that's, and I get it. She, she's the, she's the, cause you know, Dr. Ava Muhammad, she, she, you know, very wise woman, RRP. She did say that, you know, black women, uh, since you are the, at the helm of the home, you still have, you do have a responsibility to make sure that you are raising children and putting out um, good children into the world since you are at the helm. So I'm never going to say that's not the case. If you are the one that's more the, the um, in the household with the children the most, yes, it is your duty to make sure that the children are somebody conducive to society, period. However, that man needs to find him way his way back how, for whatever reason he ain't there. I'm not saying it's his fault. But for whatever reason, he ain't there with his children. He needs to find his way back to be in, in the lives of his children, period. So 
Also, I want to address one other thing you said, brother. I can't let this go because I know somebody probably like, what? You said nobody's worrying or uh, 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 studying black women. Nobody's worried about y'all. You know, you brought up the passport, brothers, and all of that. And y'all know what I say? Please let the doughnob hit you. Oh, where the good Lord split you. And I do mean that with love. You know, I mean that with love. And I say that because, like, that's also another, you know, false ass narrative that ain't nobody checking for black women. Trust me, I'm a black woman. And there's people checking for me all the time, whether I'm on this thing or I'm out in public. So I know that's a lie. Okay. Now, let's be clear. There are some black men that are not checking for black women. And I say black women over here. And that's fine. As I always say. Go where you find happiness, wherever that is. But to say that black men ain't checking for black women, that's a lie. Not all, some black men, but not all black men. It's a very, I would say it's a very small few black uh, uh, amount of, there's more black men checking for black women that are not. So, okay, okay well, let me clarify that. When I said that in general, I meant that in general terms. I never said specifically black men. When I, when I said nobody's checking for black women like that, I meant the fact that they're ruling. That's what I was re referring to. Nobody's checking for you like that. You're not ruling nothing. We're not checking for you like that. What are you, you know, what are black women ruling? We're not checking for you like that. That's kind of what I meant. What are black women ruling, but yet, you said per your numbers and it's true that 77 percent of black women are uh single mamas are in single parent households so they rule in something right but what i'm saying is you know this rule that it's not it's a false narrative it's a false narrative it's just false it's a false narrative what are they ruling a how oh you're ruling a house full of kids oh great well you can have hey, it but, but 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 sweetheart if it takes a, if a, 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 a nation can rise no uh, higher than this woman I think that's probably the see that's another thing too y'all men y'all talk about the woman the, uh, the uh, a modern woman and a traditional woman we know that uh, a traditional mama the the hardest one of the hardest job on the planet is to run a household and raise children i don't care what nobody say that is the hardest job because she is shaping and she is molding people who will go out into the world and do a b c or d right so to say oh she just raised it ruling the household shit, that where else should she be ruling because she ruled the household and the people she put out in the world is going to potentially rule something bigger, right? So the household is the most important place where a woman could rule. Well, I, I'm going to have to disagree because in a household, the man is the head of the house. So I'm going to have to disagree with that. But I, but I know where you're going with it. Yeah, I mean, my mama was not. My mama was a stay-at-home mama. Yeah, all the way up to I was 18 years old. Okay, my daddy and my stepdaddy, they worked. My mama didn't work. And she had, a, you know, the nursing degree and all that. She chose to stay, right. she chose to stay home. But my mama, she had one of the most important jobs in the Absolutely. world. And I was raising four children. Absolutely. You know, two, four smart children mm -hmm. that go and went out to, to, into the world and uh, are conducive to the society. Now, my dad's work, my dad's worked and brought home all the bacon. It took care of everything. Right. Right. Now, they, I, I guarantee you, they would both say that my mom had one of the most important roles, even far more important than them. Because she was in charge of raising the children to be, not that they didn't have anything to do with it, but because she was a circle of influence, right. uh, the first teacher, her job was more important than probably anything that they could do. Right. And I think they will both admit that. Right, right. And my mom was the same way. She was a housewife and, and raised uh, uh, two nappy-headed kids. No problem. But you're talking about a thing that went by. Let's look at the, the statistics in the time that, that you're talking about our parents. How many single mother homes back in the 70s and 60s were there wasn't very many so so uh, talking today in the modern age this is what we're talking about today 77 percent you know we, I mean, we've already been down that road but you're, you're talking about an, an era that has not long since gone but it's back in the day we're talking to, today is today you know so uh if, you, if you're leading a home 77 percent as a single mother most likely you're out there working, your kids are in daycare. They're not, they're not doing it like our mothers used to do is what I'm saying. So that's because uh, when our mamas was doing it, the man was around for whatever reason. No, no, he was around. Exactly. Exactly. But today that isn't the case. So we have to deal with what, well, what we're doing with today. The case. 
It yeah, but what, what, but you know, it does need to be the case. But what I'm saying is, again, you're uh, if somebody was if I was a young person listening to this program, I would be thinking that you, Demetri, what you're talking about is happening today, and that's not happening in general today. It, in some cases, it is. And, and if anybody young is watching this, it could happen today. Settle down to a good choice. Stop listening to the idiots. And you can call me that too on the internet. I tend to think I have a little bit more, you know, breadth and depth than what I'm saying. But stop listening to any and everybody on the internet telling you that black women ain't this, black men ain't that. Settle down to a good choice. Make sure that person is who you want to be with, you want to have children with, raise children, create a legacy. Do that. That's what our parents were doing back in the day. They knew the value and what they were in charge of doing. Men, when they got a woman pregnant, they didn't just skip and dip and hop on out of there. They knew whether I want to be with this broad or not. I'm going to be with her because I created life with her. Now, whether they stayed together, I don't know, in a lot of cases, they did stay together, right? They understood what it was and that I did not put this woman in what they say the family way. She didn't get there by herself. So I'm going to stay with her. We're going to raise these children, right? So the point that I, and I'm not even blaming men, but I'm just saying, like we make all these excuses for the black family not to be intact, just be intact. Just be intact, right? You, you get you, you you get somebody pregnant or you get pregnant with somebody, the next conversation y'all should be having is, all right, what date do we need to, to, to secure to get married so that our children come into the world with an intact household? That's the conversation. Now, there's no other conversation because- right, That's the message, right. I keep it real with you. When I got pregnant with my daughter, her grandmama, or my, her, her dad's um, mom, and you know, we, me and her dad are cool now, but she asked, she told her son, she told her son, how do you know that baby is yours, right? And he had the full ass nerve to come repeat that to me. And I told my mom that he said that. And she said, all right, give me his number. I'll tell you the story. She called him up and she let him know, you got X amount of days to come correct. Otherwise, A, B, C, or D is going to happen, right? So... The point that I'm making is, you know, you, you got to figure out, you, you, I mean, they're, they're just, they're just like, we got to leave out all these excuses as to why not to be together. Now, obviously we didn't stay together because, you know, it was really issues going on and he didn't want to just be with me. Right. So, <laughs> but that's fine. It was years and years, 30 years ago at this point, over 30 years ago. But the point that I'm making is we need to start teaching our children better. It's not like. I always say this. I want to start going to more bridal showers than baby showers. And I'm not coming to multiple baby showers from your baby if she ain't got a husband. I'm just not going to do it. I'll come to the first one, but I ain't going to keep coming to these baby showers because what you're doing is you're glorifying your child laying down repeatedly without a commitment and that, that's fine for you it just you ain't getting no gift for me to, for doing it i'm just yeah, saying i announced that like uh, two months ago i said stop inviting me to baby reveals and, and the baby showers and you ain't married or engaged or something i'm not doing it anymore i'm not going not going yep so anyway let's go i know we're gonna come, kind of go over a little bit yeah but yeah that, 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 that was a good message that needs to go out there so i agree with you on that that last message mm-hmm all right, so let's uh let's see here. This is gonna be kind of kind of maybe controversial, but we'll see here. Y'all ready? Here we go. And I've said this before that is attracted to a trans woman is not gay. So I I actually cut that off for some reason. Let me see if I could play it again. Amen. Oh, and I've said this before that is attracted to a trans woman is not gay so y'all heard it where she said and i don't know she said that any man that's attracted to a trans woman is not gay now who is that she that she is called named and i'm trying to be politically correct here so forgive me sydney star now sydney star is a trans woman where she used to be a man. She's very popular, by the way. She's kind of like in the hip hop circles. It sounds like there's some notables that have been with her. That's what she goes by. So I'm gonna be respectful of her. And so she is saying 
that if a man is attracted to a trans trans woman, I guess you're not gay. Donovan, what do you say about that? BS. BS. If if you and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of women out there and, and and trans women that look really good like women. If a man and every every man's entitled to a mistake if you make a mistake, but when you find out that that trans woman is a trans woman and you stay in that relationship, yeah, you're gay. <laughs> you would be gay. But a real man, that's it. You're going to cut it off and you're gone. So I disagree with that wholeheartedly. That's BS because when you find out that a person is actually a man and you st and you and you stay, yes, you are gay. But it I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you don't like a man with a beard and a, and a cut and, you know, and looking like a man, it is what it is. It doesn't matter if you got a wig on or not. You know, you're gay. If, if you're attracted to that, then you're gay. But what she said was total BS. Total BS. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. When I had a little heated argument with somebody about it yesterday and saying, well, no, it's not necessarily because now they're women. And I, I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit old school in, when it comes to stuff like that. I don't have anything against uh, trans people or anybody in that community. I, you know, I don't. So I just want to make that clear. However, I, I, I get a little vexed when we, and I say we in society, try to uh, redefine things, if you will. You know, like, oh, now that I'm a, I'm a woman, that don't make, you know, if a man is attracted to me, they don't make, hey, I'm one of those, maybe I'm ignorant, but I, yeah, I, I tend to think that it does because it's like you said, if I approached you and you look like a woman and I thought you were a woman and then I find out differently, then yeah, because now I know you biologically are a man. I don't care what, listen, some, somebody going to get mad. Dave Chappelle said it. J.K. Rowling said it, uh, you know, the Harry Potter books. Gender is a fact. Now, people get mad at that. If you were born a man, biologically, you were born a man, right? Like you getting a wig and eyelashes and makeup and, you know, changing your body parts around. That still does not change that you were born a certain way. Like if you were a man, you were, you were born a man. It doesn't change that, right? So um, I'll put myself in that situation. If I saw a man, I was like, damn, baby, got it going. Oh, wow, you fine. Then he says, <clears throat> oh, by the way, I used to be a woman. I'm like, that's going to change for me, right? I'm not going to be able to suspend my belief or disbelief that, okay, he told me he was a, he used to be a woman. I'm not going to be able to say, oh, okay, that's cool. To me, you are, you, you're still a man. I'm going to be always thinking about him being a woman. And so I'm going to question myself. I'm going to be like, damn, well, I don't have a problem with it. Doesn't bother me. Am I gay? Like I'm, I'm just being. I might be being ignorantly honest, but I'm, but I'm being honest because I'm one of those people. Y'all know me by now. I don't like the lie to kick, and I ain't gonna sit up here and say, "Well, no, I think it's great." There's no. I'm just keeping it real with you. I, I think, yeah, the, you not. And, but that's what I'm saying, though. People try to redefine things. Like, well, now that trans women are are, are more of a thing, and I guess out in the open because they're not new, right? that the rest of society is wrong for not going along with these new definitions. Like I, there's one um, trans woman, which trans woman probably used to be a male, said, you women don't own periods. You don't have ownership for periods. And it's like, why would you want that? Out of all the things you can have of a woman, why would you want, you trust me, boo, you don't want that. But so we're now we're in the silliness of, Oh, you can't own y'all. Well, you 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 biologic women. You don't own periods, and you don't do this, and you you're not the womanhood is not defined just this way. Womanhood is all. It's like that's just stupid at this point, right? Like mental illness. I'm sorry. You're, it's a mental illness. I'm sorry. I don't even know if it's a mental illness, Donna. I think it's more or less like we're here now. We're redefining things, and if you don't like it, then because somebody on here probably call me homophobic. Or whatever, then they, they label you because you don't want to go along with the new definition of what it means to be a woman. Listen, I'm I'm all woman. Mm -hmm. I want to say that I'm all woman. Okay, so I know what it means to be a woman. Well, now, let, me ask, can, let me ask you this: well, What's wrong with being la <coughs> labeled homophobic? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Um, because it's I mean, 
not going to do anything to me per se. Uh, now, I know what it is to be homophobic, like when you really just out there doing the most, right? And, and to me, I tend to think homophobia comes with hate, right? But the way some people try to uh, describe homophobia is that I just don't agree with you. Oh, you're homophobic. It's like, no, I just don't agree with you. Ho to me, homophobic is being, you know, nasty and maybe using some words that you should not be using. But I'm not homophobic if I just don't agree with you because what are you? Because you don't agree with me. You don't agree with me. So do I get the label you or can we just say, I, okay, that's fair. You don't agree with those terms, but that don't make you a bad person. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I may, like you said, a man is a man, whatever. You can't refute what is. It's a fact. If it's a fact, it's a fact. When people go against what is a standard fact, to me, it's a mental illness because that, that, that's like saying a dog is a cat and a cat is a dog. No, one is one and the other is the other. And if you can't see the two, something is wrong in your cabeza because you're, like you said, you're, all you're doing is redefining it. But just because you're redefining it doesn't mean it's not true. And a lot of women need to understand because now you're seeing a lot of trans women or women, I don't know, you like your saucy Santanas. I don't know if he defines himself as trans. He's got the beard and the BBL and all that other stuff. Um, you know, they're running around talking about you uh, biological women, I guess. Y'all can learn something from us. And it's like, okay, so now you're going too, a little too far. Cause how you think you how you think you walking around with that high pitched voice and BBL and the makeup off? Where you think you got that from? You got that from a woman. So now you turn around talking about we need to learn from y'all. For see, that's I'm y'all gonna be mad at me. I blame a lot of the sisters out there that be big up in an amen and that stuff. And now they telling you sit sit down and learn something from us. Like what can I learn from you? Well, 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 well. Think about it this way too. Okay, you got this trans dude, whatever. He enters. I'm gonna use this as an example. The WNBA. Next, you know, another guy enters in. I mean, they're having problems in sports right now with these uh, young boys uh, entering into girls' sports and stuff. So now the, the girls are getting upset because, again, you can't refute your biology. I could dress up, put a wig on, and put all that stuff on me, but my testosterone as a natural man, I'm stronger. It is what it is. That's the way we're designed. I'm going to be faster. I'm going to jump higher. I'm going to do everything that I was designed to do as a man. So now we're having problems in women's sports because I'm all for uh, equality in women's sports. But how is that equal when a biological man, biologically he's a man, is now entering women's sports and the girl that's worked her hard that likes soccer or whatever the sport she likes, she can't compete with that man. So now the guy enters the WNBA, one of the very few pro sports we have in the United States where women could make $100,000, $200,000 if they're the top athlete. So now you're going to have guys because let's face it, the WNBA women cannot beat college players, and in some cases, high school players. Now they're entering the WNBA, pushing these girls out of that where they're going to make the money. And like you said, I hate that it's come to this, but the women that have big up this, this agenda has now agendized themselves out of opportunities. Yeah, and I, and I want to be clear. I don't care what you put on. You put on what, a wig, makeup. I don't care. That is, It has nothing to do with me. But I think that, you know, and obviously legislation has a lot to do with that, you know, but like you said, when it comes to, oh, I want to run down the track with you and I'm a woman, it's like, well, biologically, you a man. So you probably going to have a little bit more force and speed behind what you got going on. So that, you know, but again, we need to be careful of what we clap for, right? I'm not saying we, we we're saying that you can't wear your lipstick and all whatever, you, but as far as you trying to compete with me, I, biologically, you're still a man. You know what I mean? So anyway, let's we're gonna be going over a little bit. I hope that's all right with y'all. We got this last topic plus um our card game. We'll try to get through this really quick. So um I was watching this with my daughter and we were kind of trying to decide if it was real or not. It looks like it's authentic, but I want you guys' opinion and uh, um in addition to your opinion on the whole situation. So here we go. Be ordering food for her kids that's at home. So it's for my kids. Real kids. Yeah, you owe me that. And they were their daddy? <laughs> no, there it is. Oh my god, so that's so go ahead and bring another steak and some um, potatoes. Okay. No, I'm going to bring no steak and potatoes. Um, uh, I'm going to bring a check. I'm paying, for, I'm paying for my meal and your meal. I'm not paying and for your kids', kids meal. meal. No. Yes, you are. No, I'm not paying for oh their kids' god. meal. 
No, no. So you don't think you owe me after having me wait an hour and a half? I told you I owe you. I owe you one. I'll take you out okay, again. Okay, so you going to pay for my kids' food? No, I'm not doing okay, that. Can you please go ahead and I'm not doing that. Okay. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, beautiful. Hold on, hold on. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why? Why are you trying to bring two, please? What, what's your name, Kier? Bring two orders. Why should I do that, Kier? Because you sitting right here on the date. I was late to the date. I was late to the date. You bring two orders. But I said, why would I get? Why would I get her kids food? Why would I get her kids some food? They were they with their daddy. She was she was right here. They daddy should be eight and five year old cheese steak with a side of a one sauce. Fuck out of here, baby. Nah, hell no, hell no. I'm straight. I'm cool. Don't don't put that on my bill. Give him a Don't put that on me. Make sure you put a side of a one sauce as well. He Yo, can you, all of this today. I'm not paying for yes, all that. No, I'm not paying for all that. Yes, you You're going to get her fired up in here. She ain't gonna get no, fired. I'm about to go back in the kitchen. You got me messed up, though. I'm about to her right now. No, for real. I'm telling her right now. No, you got me messed up. I'm not paying for that. No, I'm not. I'm not paying for this food. I'm not paying for this. She's sitting here and watching. Just because I was late. Just because I was late. I'm not paying for this. No, I'm not doing that. And then after that, we already at Red Lobster. You can take me nowhere. I'm about to go back in the kitchen. I'm going back to the kitchen. No, I'm not paying for this. I'm about to leave. That plate is you for her for and her food. man later. Hey, yo, Fellas, food. don't hey, fall for it. No, nah, listen, no, nah, I'm straight. I've been here since I was 15. Okay, I told you I owe you one. So, I mean, I'll take you out again. Whatever. Do something for you. But I'm not doing Whatever. something for your kids. Whatever. No, I, want you I ain't even met your kids. I want you to make sure that my kids eat too. Man, y'all see this, man? Look, I'm time. recording this. Look, y'all see this shit, bro? I'm recording, bro. Donovan? I don't think you really want to hear what I got to say about something like that. I really don't think you want to hear it because it goes on all the time. It goes on all the time. And again, it kind of goes back to single, you know, women out there with children. It's very difficult to date and do all these things, but she has an entitlement like, you know, okay, you got kids at home. If you had stayed with, with the man of the kids, you guys can go on in the date and it wouldn't be a hassle. He can pay for his own kids, but to have an expectation of a, a man that you're dating or whatever to, to do something for your kids. It, it's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's unrealistic. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have too, I have too many words for that and I'm not going to get into it with, with, with it about it, but it's unrealistic. And a lot of these women have this entitlement that, Oh, I'm a woman. And I, you know, you get the, uh, the man's already taken her on the date. He's not taking the kids on the date. He's taking her on the date. What more, what more is she expecting? Well, it sounds like she's making an issue that he was an hour and a half late. And I guess he said that he, uh, he owes her one or something like that. And so sounds like she's taking issue with, okay, well, since she was an hour and a half late, you can at least buy my children who sound like they are eight and five, a steak dinner and some, I don't know, some chicken nuggets or whatever it was. And so, um, she also said, or he is saying to her that they with their daddy, why do I need to, you know, buy them food or whatever? So obviously there, she's very insistent upon him doing that. Um, and even goes on to order the food and the waitress looks like she's going to go get it. Now, the longer video that I saw, he actually went to the kitchen and told them, nah, <laughs> don't do it. And they tell him, get out the kitchen, and, you know, this, that, the other. So that's kind of why I was like, yeah, maybe I think it's real. I don't know. I could be wrong because the, the sister in the kitchen was like, if you don't get from out of here, you know. <laughs> so um, I will say this. I actually counseled somebody, um, a gentleman last week. It's a, it's a very tricky situation. Um, he's with a younger woman and they were going out. She dropped, they dropped the children off to their father. Um, and so they were going out, but she was mad. She says, well, I need to get to my children something to eat. We need to take them something to eat. So he was like, well, they with the daddy type of thing. And so she was like, well, I don't care. I, you know, I want to make sure they get something to eat. And he was like, well, the daddy can't do it. So fine. He's like, okay, let's stop by McDonald's and get some cheeseburgers. And she was like, no, I don't want them eating cheeseburgers. So he said he's went and spent nearly 50 bucks at Chick-fil-A for food. For, she had two children uh, for the children. And they took it back. Um, you know, to the father where he had the kids and stuff. And so he was very irate and upset about that. And I said, well, I mean, there's a lot of problems there. You're dating this woman and she, y'all dropped the kids off to the daddy. And shouldn't the daddy be feeding the kids? Like, why is it? Why? So I said, the other thing too is, why is she more mad at you who is not the children's father than she is at the children's father who should be making sure they eat. 
And I said, at what point in that date or on the way to the date, wh what was it in you that you felt like you couldn't tell her no, right? Now, obviously, it was because she was, you know, protesting and she was mad about it. If he didn't do it, I get it. Maybe he thought it was going to impede on him getting some Kit Kat at the end of the date. I don't know, right? But I said, I think that's problematic that you don't think it's problematic that she's holding you more responsible for feeding the children than the daddy that is with the children. So the other thing that I have here is, fellas, why are y'all dating and spending time with women that are acting like that? Because if I was the man at the table, I'd be like, listen, all right, since she wanted to act the whole ass, now this is just me. I'm kind of on the fence with it. I might have said, hey, we need to split this check, okay? I don't like her attitude. Let's split. I, I want two checks. She could pay for hers, and I'm gonna pay for mine. And it would have been about money. It would have been about your attitude. I like. There's some men who would do it, right? There's some men that wouldn't have a problem with that. But if you are insisting and and you feel entitled that I do that, it sounds like they we kind of just were met each other. So it's like I don't know if it had been me. I'd be like, yeah, we need to split the checks. Yeah, you know, and, and you know. <clears throat> It's un it's unfortunate, but you know you've got a lot of women that are finessing dudes like that to, for uh, meals and stuff for their children and for themselves and stuff. I, you know, I would have just like you said, split the check and say, "Hey, I, I, I paid for mine. I'm out." Um, it is not that man's responsibility to feed her kids. It's her responsibility and her baby daddy's responsibility. And um, unfortunately, a lot of women, younger women nowadays, feel entitled to just give me the money or, you know, feed me. And, and, and another thing that was wrong with that is, okay, so he was late to the date. Let's talk about that. Why are you still accepting the date? If he didn't meet you, your requirement to pick you up at eight o'clock or whatever time you guys were met, why did you continue to go on the date? Yeah, I mean, because it'd be different if you would have said, okay, you know, I'm sorry. I know we said we was going to meet at six, but I'm running a little behind. Can we meet it? Can I come get you and meet you at 730? Yeah, sure. Fine. But if I'm waiting, 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 I listen, I'm taking off these earrings and I'm going to twist my hair up in my little, you know, buckwheat braids. And I'm going to see, because Donovan seen me do it the other day when I, on Sunday, I was like, shoot, I'm tired. Let me twist my hair up. I'm going to do that and I'm going to sit down back on the couch or go to bed, whatever. So yeah, that is problematic. And I think that if somebody is picking you up late for a day, you need to know your worth and say, okay, you know what? You obviously don't have respect for me because you're abusing my time. I just rather not go in and if we, you want to get it together another day, then I think about it, right? But as far as now, see, this is, I'm all, like I said, I'm old school and it might just be my age. If I was going out on a date with a gentleman and I had children, I'm going to make sure my babies eat before I leave. I'm not going to drop my babies off hungry nowhere or expect somebody or I, 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 I'm going to say, here's a couple of dollars or whatever. Can you get them something to eat or stop off somewhere, wherever I'm dropping my children to here's some food. And if they with their daddy and I feel like he ain't going to feed them, I'm going to make sure that my children eat. I'm not going to be worried about my children hungry while I'm sitting up to a five course meal. Right. I think that's what, you know, a, a mama would do. Make sure your kids are straight before you go off gallivanting all through the night. Right. But then there's some other situations where if she was nice. She could have said, you know what? I'm sorry. I, th this is probably going to sound a little uh, forward for a first date or whatever. But do you mind if I order my children something as well? Just a little something because I did not get a chance to feed them. And I'm a little concerned that they didn't eat. Now, some people will find that problematic and it's their right to. But I'm saying there's a way to do things right now. The man might be like, but then he might say, well, you know. What is it going to hurt, right? If I'm really a lot trying to impress this young lady, she came to me like she had some sense. The date was going well. I didn't get that she was trying to finesse me type of vibes. Then maybe. I'm not saying he should have to. I'm just saying there's a way to do things. But, oh, yeah, I'm, by the way, I'm going to need a steak dinner for my eight-year-old and some chicken nuggets. I, what? But, but, did, <laughs> did you, but, but, did, but did you hear what she was saying to him? like what he's going to do and uh, I'm late. So at least you could do, how are you going to dictate to somebody who's paying for the meal, what they're going to do to appease you or whatever? He doesn't have to do anything. And fellas, don't you guys fall for it? These girls are finessing. You actually think a kid is going to eat a steak. I don't know how long old these kids are. A five-year-old kid is going to eat a steak from Denny's or wherever that is. That's going to the da the baby daddy. Come on That's now. That's what he said. <laughs> this is for a man. Yeah. Come on now. Stop it. 
stop it. You're going to bring a steak. She's still sleeping. Come on now. Don't fall for it, fellas. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, that, that was pro very problematic. All right, so let's go ahead and do this game really quick. And yeah, we thank y'all. We're, we're only four minutes over. It's not too bad for uh, hanging in there with us. All right, so do we we play our game tonight's conversation. It's the date night edition. Uh, we've been playing this for the last couple of months. Um, it's a, typically a game that you will play with your significant other or somebody you're getting to know. Uh, but Donovan and I are playing this just, you know, to make it interesting and maybe y'all learn something different and we'll learn something different. Okay, so we got three cards. I'm going to shuffle them around. I, I, at this, I did it early this morning. I forgot what they even say. All right. You want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. You go first? Okay. <clears throat> Have you ever blown up, called or text repeatedly without getting a response? Someone's phone before. If so, what was the reason? No, I've never done that because um, I'll send a text, whatever. I leave it at that and I, I keep it pushing. Yes, I have done that. I have done that. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I, I've done that. Um, and I think I I think I know a lot of cases I've done it because I felt like I was being disrespected or I was ignored. And then there's that little voice inside of me saying, I know some may write, you know, something's going on. And so, you know, sometimes when you don't have control of your emotions, uh, you get all these scenarios going on in your head. Oh, they're ignoring me. They must be on the phone with somebody else. And oh, you're gonna answer my phone type of thing. So, yes, I have done that. And, and that's the reason, just you know, lack of emotional intelligence and not being in control of my emotions. Uh, also um letting my imagination run away with me. Now, a lot of times it was probably I was probably right, but the other thing is it just, you know, and evolving, because I'm always going to be evolving to the day they lower me six feet deep. Just evolving, you, you don't have control over anybody else. You cannot make them answer the phone. And then I always say this because I have this conversation with um, a lot of my friends. Person doesn't call you back, answer your phone. They don't have to do that. As horrible as that feels, they don't have to do that. They don't owe you that. And uh, uh, the other thing is somebody don't want to answer your phone call or your text. Why well, keep texting them? You know, shoot them the bird. I almost did it, but I ain't gonna shoot them the bird and keep it pushing, right? To find somebody that wants to talk to you. That, that's my thing. They don't want to talk to you. There are so many people who want to talk to you, right? But you got to realize, okay, if this person is not answering my call, then you know they see the phone. Most time people have their phone in their hand next to them. They sleep next to their phone. So the phone is not an issue, right? It's not like the phone is hanging on a wall somewhere. So they're just choosing not to answer it. So why would you want to? Why, why would you even want to be involved with somebody who would be, be so horrible to you, right? Just to stop calling them, right? And, and you got to also take the consideration: what if they're in court? What if they're in a place where they can't talk at that moment? You know what I mean? You just things like that. It depends yeah, on, and then, and, and then it also it also depends on the person you're dealing with. Like I deal with a lot of military people, right? So they're not going to call me back immediately because they might be flying or they might be in the field or whatever. So it kind of depends on what kind of friend you're now. If you got those friends that are just sitting in the Section 8 house, ain't got nothing to do all day about talk about going to the club later on or whatever, that's a different story. You know what I mean? So, But normally I think this too applies to somebody that you're into or you're with or whatever. They don't answer the phone. I think by that time you can uh, probably just uh, assume that the ship has sailed in that relationship because I don't care what you say, okay? You answering the phone for somebody you went to. You know what I mean? Everybody got that person like, ooh. You know, you get butterflies, they call. I don't care. You could be skydiving, damn it. You could be in the middle of a skydive. If they call your phone, you know what? Let me call you right back. I mean, I'm, I'm skydiving right now. I'm about to hit the ground. because You know what I'm saying? You're going to answer the phone, but some people you don't want to answer the phone for. And I, this is where we got to get real with ourselves. You may be that person they don't want to answer the phone for. Find right. somebody who does want to answer the phone. Right. Like I said, a person like me, the only person I really answer the phone for is my, is my elderly, well, not she's not elderly, but my mother, you know, I'll pick up the phone, you know, as soon as I can for her, but everybody else to me, I don't live on my phone. So my, my phone is just that. It's just a phone to me. I could care less. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. My father, you know, he's elderly or, you know, I'll answer, but some, I, I don't always have my phone next to me, I, I, but I have my watch. So if my watch will ring, you know, uh, so yeah, the, so nowadays there's really no excuse. So I, I'll just put it that way. So, you know, the next question, and I'll answer this first. Which childhood experience has shaped you the most? Oof. That's a 
that's a good one. Which childhood experience has shaped me the most? Oh, I remember one time I had the flu. It's the only time I can remember, I, I, you know, that to, uh, in my earliest recollection of having the flu, it was really bad, right? Um, and my mom and my dad, they weren't home. I was 10 years old. I can remember they weren't home. And I was lying on the bathroom floor and I was just, I couldn't move, right? And so then I started singing. I started singing, um, I think it's, he's got the whole world in his hands because that's when we had started going to church and stuff. And I learned that song and I was just singing and singing and singing and just, you know, I think it was my way of 10 year old just really trying to um, feel better. And then after I sang the song for about 10 minutes or so, it was like a miracle. I felt like 100% better. I wasn't sick anymore. I was able to get up and things like that. And that's when I realized that I had the power to, um, I, I have more power than I thought that I did, that I was able to shape uh, certain things in my life and determine how I felt uh, just by changing my mind state, right? So that was, that was the um, one thing I can uh, remember. And then also it followed me in to as an adult um, during childbirth when I was having my daughter, I thought they were giving me uh, pain medicine. They did not, they weren't giving me pain medicine. I just thought that they were. It was just the IV, right, to keep me hydrated. And so when it came time for me to actually deliver her, I was like, oh my God. Now, mind you, it's like eight hours or so, no pain medication, right? So I get ready to, to you know, have her. I had to completely dilate and I was in a lot of pain. And it was like, I was like, oh, I need something. Oh, I need some more. And it was like, we haven't been giving you anything. And then, of course, once I realized they weren't giving me any pain medication, then it's like, oh, my God, I'm in so much pain. So I say all that to say I knew that a lot of things were in the in, in uh, within my control, the power of my mind. Right. But that whole time, it was like they, you hear about a placebo. They give you something. You think it's a drug, but it's not. When I was uh, going through child labor, and that was a placebo. I thought they were giving it to me. So I was OK. I mean, if it hurt a little bit. But I had two women, one woman on this side and another one, and they were ah, the whole time. And the nurse kept coming and saying, it's not really that bad. I'm like, no, it's not too bad. But I didn't have any pain medication. So I damn near delivered my daughter without any medication. They gave me some at the end, like five minutes before I actually pushed her out. But that's what shaped my, uh, one of the uh, most memorable experiences that shaped my childhood is that I um, actually could control a lot of things that go on in my life. Well, for me, um, there was an experience. Me and my brother were at the house one day. I, I would have been like seven or eight or something like that. And my mom was at work and she told us to do these things and we didn't do them. We, me and my brother ended up fighting during the day, right? My mom had it. That was it, right? And she, you know, you know, like like a mom, you know, she's she's really upset and stuff that we're remember she's upset that we're we're fighting each other. Cause you know, because when she leaves, that's all we have. You know, my mom was a widow. So if my mom is gone, I have nothing at that point at a young, as a young child. And the one haunting thing, and my mother always gave us uh, reality. My, my mother delves in reality. She doesn't deal with the, the gray area. My mom was not a gray area person. Very rare my mom would move into the gray. Everything was either black or white, okay? And she was all upset, uh, but you know, we. I think we, we were old enough where she wasn't whipping us like that anymore. You know, we weren't like little kids, but we weren't grown either. But and she was so upset. My mother was so upset because she worked so hard and we're out here just acting an ass in the house and we're not doing the chores. And I remember she said one thing. One thing that changed my life forever. My mama used to say that used to terrify me. She said, if you cannot follow the rules in this house, my house. That front door is not locked. You can walk out of there any time you are ready. And you know, it, it, and my mom used a lot of psychology when I really think about it, because when I really thought about what she was saying at seven or eight years old, however I was, it made me think, can I go out there and get a job? Can I go and dip, you know, fend for myself? You know, you know what I mean? It, it just, it just really hit me. And, and from that point, I've always used that reference in regards to life and what I'm going to do out there in the real world. But as a child at that young age, to be given that, that thought pattern of, yeah, I need to follow rules. I need to get this done and get myself prepared for life because right now I can't do it. So 
so that 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 was the big thing for me. And like I said, my my mom, you know, always, you know, my mom's a small woman in in regards to stature. She's an average size woman, five four, whatever. But when you're raising two boys who will eventually be bigger than you, she had to change her tactics of I'm gonna put hands on you because back in the day they could put hands on you, right? And use more psychology. And it really, it really affected me as I was, even when I was in school from that point on, I was always thinking, well, if I don't graduate and get my diploma, you know, I'm not going to get able to get a good job. Of course, our, that generation told us, oh, you go to college, you're going to get a good job. Not true. But the point is, you know, that's what they thought was the thing to do. And it always stuck with me. But at seven, eight years old, it really affected me as a child. Absolutely. All right, so our last one, and I'll let you go first. It says, what do you consider to be husband slash wife only benefits? Should these benefits be given while dating? Okay, certain uh, benefits of husband wife type benefits. When the man is doing his job, being the, pr the provider, the protector, uh, the fix it man, the uh, you know idea man, the leader type type thing. That's one thing. Women being the nurturers, the, um, the finishers. Like I said, I always think, I always think like this, men are, are the, uh, starters. They have the concept, they have the program, they lead it, but the women come in and they finish it. It's like when you build a house, you have the people that, that put up the erect structure. Then you got the finishers that come in and do the little things and make it look really good. So when dating, no, you should not be doing that. And in the modern age, I see young people, you're with this guy for five, seven years, you've given him three children, but y'all are not ready to get married. You, you, you never will be ready because you've given him all of the benefits of marriage without any commitment, without anything. So until you're ready to take that step, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, You know, this is a difficult one for me because I feel like, well, I don't want to make it seem like I can't answer the question because I have done wifely things for men that I was not married to. But then there's the other thing is, and y'all, sorry, y'all see I'm, I'm glowing. I'm not trying to be, it's the sun that's on me. Then, then there's the other side of the conversation is, well, how will I know you're a wife if I don't know you could do wifely things, right? So th th that's kind of why I say it's kind of hard to answer. However, um, I don't think that... A man or a woman should have more time, more of your time than necessary. So I kind of piggyback off of what you said. Listen, bro, if we ain't talking about getting married within the first six months, then you're wasting my time. And I'm just I'm just saying as a you know, 51 year old woman that's been in relationships for years, you know, I've been engaged a few times, been engaged a few times, married once for 10 months. Um, and so I just don't think that, um, uh, um, anybody, I think when you go past a certain time, you, you know, and for me, I would say six months with somebody and you don't know if they want, would see you as wife material or want to spend the rest of their life with you. Then as my dad said, you just a play thing. You're not the main thing. That Negro is wasting your time. And fellas, that woman is wasting your time, Negress, in all fairness, because somebody gonna say, hey, I don't know. That Negress is wasting your time. If she has not said, hey, baby, you know, we approaching the you know six month thing, and I, I would like to spend the rest of my life with you. Or if a man is, you know, he playing around, he want to come over and then hop up and down on you, and you know, he wants you to cook for him and all this other stuff, but he ain't talking about making you an honest woman. Now that's how you know I'm getting old. An honest woman then you might want to reassess and be like, that's wifely stuff. That's wifely stuff giving a man or, or and I'm speaking from a woman's point of view. So I'm not saying, you know, anything bad about him. I feel like I got to just clarify that because there'd be some men who just to just don't critically listen. Right. And some women too. But I feel like giving a man more time than necessary. That's wifely stuff. Because now we're going into wifely time. OK, we on the wife time clock. Now, if I'm going past six months and you haven't declared whether you want to be with me, you know, as a, as, a, as a husband or whatever, you haven't said that to me, then I need to reassess some things. I need to say, OK, 
Because I ain't the type of woman that's going to be, you know, get on my knee and ask no man for nothing. Matter of fact, I'm not the type of woman that's going to go um, proposition a man about no dates. I'm just not. I'm not going to do that. I don't care. Somebody could say, ah, oh, you know, he, he, nah, because y'all on one hand can talk about modern women, but a traditional woman such as I ain't going to ask no man out on no date. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not going to do it. So I'm not going to ask no man to marry me. So I feel like that's the man's job to declare to that woman, hey. I'm digging you. I can see you as being my wife. I want to, you know, let's start having that conversation. So now I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. He on the same page as me now. Now only can you be talking about it. I need you to be about it, right? And I ain't saying you got to have no rock that I got to have a wagon, you know, rolling the wind ring around because it's so heavy. I'm just something, right? There's like something to say that I want you to be mine, right? Six months, I'm just saying that's my personal time. I spend some time with you, and but I, I when we start going into the wife time zone, then we're gonna have to make a decision, bro. Right, you know, and, I, and, and real quick, I'm gonna uh, jump on top of that because a lot of people are gonna be like, Well, how would you know she she could do cook, clean, and whatever? In the six months, if you haven't gone to her apartment or her home and seen where she lives, where she lives is gonna tell you a lot, okay. I how she live. Right, exactly. How she live. How many fellas you've been in the date and like you'll go there and don't get me wrong. And you got you guys got to be reasonable. A woman that has kids, you're not going to expect the house to be flawless. Okay? I got I got some friends that are like idiots. The house should be this way. The woman's got two or three kids. Their house is not going to be that way. But but the point is it shouldn't be tore up either. You're going to find out everything you need in that 6 months. Can she cook? In 6 months she hasn't invited you to, to for a home cooked meal? She hasn't invited you to do that? So again, and always remember this, ladies, and, and this is what I always tell my young friends and, and a lady friend, a man can waste your time, but you could never waste a man's time. And I'm talking about things that in life, you know, uh, women on certain clocks to do certain things biologically. And, you know, you're going to sit with that man five, seven years and he won't marry you. And, you know, and if you're a, a, a honest woman and you want to bring children in the world with a husband, hey, you got to look at that, that, that type of stuff. Yep. So I say it again, time. I don't think somebody you're dating should be privy to that kind of time, right? As the old people used to say, shit, get off the pot. So, and, and, and last thing, ladies, I want to just say this. Mm -hmm. If you're giving the milk for free, how, why would you expect them to buy, buy the cow? Right. But then that's the other thing. We're going to go on a little bit over that. That's the other thing, though. That's the other thing. Okay. Cause I hear you. I hear men. I hear you. I hear it because I like that. I like you not getting none of the milk until I get the, I, I like that. I, I want to be married before you get some milk. I think that's proper, right? However, y'all say that stuff, in theory, it's cute. But if y'all run across a woman talking about, listen, boo, you ain't getting no thing without the rain. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Y'all going to be like, oh, no, I got the sample and I got the see. I got Y'all ain't going 99.92% of men aren't going for a woman telling him, I got to listen, you, you can't be up under my clothes until I get something on my finger. Right. right so right. I think we need to be realistic, you know, but I'm one of those women that I'm not going to be laying down with a man that ain't mine. I don't believe in that casual sex and well, we just friends with benefits. I'm going to let a man come over and just we just do what I, we do. And then you leave now nah, because I, I have more value on myself than that. You can go jump. I ain't no mattress. You know what I mean? Well, you know, and, and then, you know, what, what I'm kind of saying with that, because we know people are, are more casual with, with the, their sexual uh, desires. What I'm saying is, ladies, if you go all out for the dude and he's not your husband, I'm not, you know what I mean? There's those, those little extra things that some women do. Oh, he's not going to be, he's not going to be your husband because you've given him everything, you know, hold back on some of the stuff to seal the deal. That's all. I'm all right. Saying. So Donovan, let's play, let's play devil's advocate for two minutes. A, a woman come, you meet this woman and she bad, like whatever, you know, she just she, like Laura Ann was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> whatever Donovan deems to be bad. She bad. You take out the dinner stuff and you like, damn. And you say, you know, come back to my house for a nightcap. She goes back to your house for a nightcap. you like, you know, it's late. Why don't you go on and spend the night? She says, well, you know, I would love to. However, I don't get intimate with men that I'm not married to. 
What say you? I, you know what? I, I can respect that. I can respect that because that, that lets me know I'm going to have to work for this if I really want it. That's just me. I, you know, because it, there's the challenge right there. If I really want to be with her, I'm going to do what I got to do to get with her. Some guys are just, you know, oh, that's too much. Oh, you want me to work for it? That ain't the man for you, ladies. That's not the man for you. He doesn't want to work for it. I and want I'm glad, a challenge. I'm glad you said that. And, uh, you know, and this is this, you know, we speaking on women. We're not saying it doesn't apply to men and women and men. Don't be afraid to lose that person. If they don't want to work to be with you, I'm not saying you, you they got you jumped through hoops of fire and you, you I, yeah, I, I ain't talking about that kind of stuff. Talk about somebody who says, okay, I like what you're saying, but I want you to back it up too, right? I want you to prove, because I, I wanted to have this conversation, which maybe we can have it next week in regards to people on the internet aren't who they say they are. Like on the internet, you look so good. You're saying all the right things. When I meet you in person, it's like, You have a twin. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. Just just, you know, make sure they can make it they can anything back worth having is worth working for, fellas. I mean, if she's yeah. a bad chick, hey, you you don't you won't mind. Like I said, you don't want to go through the silliness of obstacle courses. But the point is, ladies, you know, challenge that man. Make sure he's of his word. Make sure he he says he is who he's if he says he's working somewhere. Trust but verify. Go and check. Yeah, because when I was in my 20s, I had a Negro tell me he was a teacher, but he was a crossing guard at the school. It's like. And, and, and you know what? A real man wouldn't have a problem with you verifying and checking that. It's like, yeah, OK, yeah. cool. And, and then that and that puts you at ease. because You're saying, wow, I'm dealing with a guy that's really uh, honest. He's nice looking. He's attractive to me. Wow. He's 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 hitting all the look. What? 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 What's wrong with that? And if you were crossing guard, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's, that's admirable. You know what I mean? You got to get the kids across the, the street safely. I, I can dig it. Now, you know, I, I don't want to have to take care of you, you know. Whatever, I, like, let me shut up because I'm gonna get myself in trouble. So anyway, y'all, we love and appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. If you guys celebrate the holidays, y'all do please have a great holiday. Um, I will be in California, but I'll be back here next Tuesday. So Donovan and I will be on here Tuesday. We won't be on here Sunday, but we will be on here tomorrow or Wednesday, I think. Wealth Wednesday with Walter. But in the meantime, you guys, we have ways to help uh, support this channel uh cash have them or paypal become a member at least like the video and everything share it whatever you need to do become a member all of that helps of course you can check us out on um spotify and other uh podcasts as well so you guys do please have a great rest of your day we will see y'all later peace